So for our next talk, we have uh, Markande Singh, is that how you pronounce it, Singh? Uh, with Moonwalking with JavaScript. So everyone get a big hand for Mark Andy. Hello, everyone. So I'm Mark Andy. I work at Yahoo, specifically uh, Yahoo Developer Network. And uh, I'm going to talk about my experiences I have de uh, when I was developing a uh, developer uh, forum at developer.yahoo.com slash forum. So uh, the talk will be uh, focused on that, but I have my own uh, uh, code to show you uh, uh, demos, which is not exactly the developer forum, but uh, taking the pieces out of it and shown in a different demo, which will be simpler than what we have there. So in general, we assume three layers of uh, web, uh, the people who are the front end. Uh, the first layer is the client side, which is the browser. And the server-side front-end, which is at the server and uh, most importantly doing the uh, front-end pieces. And then everything else is we treat as a back-end APIs. So uh, whether we control it or not, but mostly treat it as a back-end. And when we are optimizing the back-end APIs, we are optimizing like a sprints. So you just run uh, across the time and uh, you just figure out like this is my time uh, deadline and you uh, optimize your APIs against that. Means you optimize for milliseconds and uh, make sure that our APIs are running faster and within limited time. And there is no other parameter to optimize it. While on the front end, you actually interface to a human. And uh, because of that, uh, the, it becomes a little different. And you don't op often optimize for the time straight away. Rather, you um, optimize differently. And you actually, uh, your main goal would be to make uh, it perceived faster than actually it is faster or not. And that's why I call it as uh, optimizing front end is like a moonwalking. You have to uh, make the user perceive it's a faster web page rather than whether it's not, uh, whether it's actually faster or not. And uh, the usability engineers have come up with these timelines to uh, classify what is instantaneous for the user and what is not. So anything which is less than 100 millisecond is considered as instantaneous. So if uh, any delays happen within, uh, anything happening within 100 millisecond, user will perceive as instantaneous. But anything which goes beyond 100 millisecond and within one second, it, it is, a delay will be noticed by the user. But you can keep, avoid having the uh, mess messaging and the feedback about the delay. But anything beyond one second is completely uh, requires a feedback. And if you go uh, beyond 10 seconds, probably user will switch and start working on something else. So here is a small demo which shows uh, the timeline. So if I click set, these boxes will go orange. And uh, you see uh, the first box will take 100 millisecond and then 500, one second, five second, and 10 second respectively. So you see the delay. It's like, so the first box took 100 millisecond, which uh, felt as instantaneous. The last box, which is taking 10 seconds, is not really fast. And anything beyond one second was a little uh, bit uh, lag. So um, when you are a front-end developer, you control only two things. Uh, one is the client-side uh, uh, code and then the server-side front-end. And you can't control the network latencies, uh, DNS resolution time, backend APIs, anything else. So uh, that's where it becomes uh, important to you keep focusing on these delays and provide the proper feedback at every uh, point of time. And some cases is acceptable to have. Uh, uh, it's important to have uh, take more time to perform a task than uh, actual minimum feasible time you take it. And these are the things user perceives. Uh, one is the time to the first byte. So whatever uh, uh, shows in the progress, uh, the uh, loading icon in the Chrome or uh, any of the browser, user take it. Uh, user think it's very annoying. If your web page doesn't uh, respond in a particular amount of time, user gets frustrated. And if you have uh, loading uh, boxes here, that's also a bit frustrating because after content is loaded, your browser reflows and every 
mind mapping of the user uh, changes. So uh, time to the first slide, as I said, it's annoying to the user. So uh, while I was developing YDN forum, we had some content as a head of uh, the main content and then the side content. And everything uh, in the web page, uh, whether it's header, uh, main container, or the side, everything adds to a delay. So when you build it on the server, everything uh, have API call at the back end, and then you build the data, then you respond to the user. And this all contributes to the time uh, to the first byte on the uh, client side. So uh, if you are running uh, beyond a second of uh, time to the first byte, you should offload some of the contents. Like I decided to offload this uh, side widget depending upon the importance of the uh, module. And I decided to lazy load it. So uh, I'm using a demo right here to uh, show you uh, uh, the lazy load, uh, uh, lazy load which I did. So simply, I, I had a module something like this, which actually, uh, if I press refresh, it takes some time. If you see here, it's taking a bit of time, and then it loads, and your content is here. And then if you search something, test search, it takes another amount of time and loads it. So if you have some modules uh, having this amount of time uh, taking to load, you, have, you should certainly make it a lazy load. So uh, this is my uh, lazy load demo. So what I did is I uh, actually lazy loaded this portion of code which makes the uh, call to the YQL. So uh, before I go with the YQL, YQL is a, a API from Yahoo which uh, gives you consistent uh, uh, API front end to the most of the web API we have today. And most of them is from Yahoo and there are third party APIs as well. So this YQL API actually pulls Flickr photos and uh, the API itself takes a fairly good amount of, uh, fairly less amount of time, but I uh, deliberately added delay to make you feel if there are delay, how it feels like to the user. So in this uh, demo, I lazy loaded this module. So if you see, it uh, immediately responds, but there is a lazy load uh, button, which actually uh, lazy load container, which loads after the API response. Though it's okay, the response is pr pretty fine, but the loading, uh, Thing is still annoying to the user. So what will you do uh, to avoid all these things? So uh, what I decided to do is uh, I use local storage. And uh, local storage is basically a small uh, browser supported uh, storage on the uh, browser which you can uh, store a key and value. And it's a very uh, simple APIs, uh, Windows or local storage or set item, you set some key and the value. And when you say get item, it returns you the value. So uh, uh, there is a difference from the local storage to the cookies. Cookies are always sent to the server, while lo uh, local storage data is not sent to the server. And uh, you can use station storage instead of local storage if you want to um, uh, if you want data to be maintained only when the browser uh, remains open. Uh, so session storage gets destroyed once the browser is closed. So uh, what I decided, I stored the HTML of that particular module in the local storage, and once the page is loaded, I uh, and DOM is ready, I inject that HTML to the uh, back into the DOM. So, uh, so after the lazy load uh, storage, what happened is something like this. So it responds fairly, uh, fairly fast. And then there is a loading icon for a uh, split of a second, and then everything loaded immediately. Of course, this content can be uh, old, and it may not be up to date. So at the uh, background, you can update the content uh, uh, without uh, actually notifying to the user. But you still, you see the uh, browser reflow is happening, and there is some flickering uh, experience. So uh, why is that happening is because uh, we have onload event. So every, uh, most of our JavaScript hits when onload is fired in the browser or the document is ready. And uh, if your uh, page is little bigger, this, uh, this delay will be little uh, uh, much more larger. Here it's pretty simple because we don't have any other content on the page. So if you see, it's pretty much uh, quite okay. But on other cases, it might be uh, slower. So what's the solution for this? I came up with the solution like uh, throw a document dot write uh, for that particular module. So if I have a module here, 
So uh, in the module, I'll be uh, throwing a script block with document dot write and what uh, and take the local storage item, which is my HTML, and write into the DOM. So with that, uh, the experience will be something like this. You'll never feel a lag at all. Like it's directly while the page was loaded, it's uh, taken from the local storage and written into the DOM. So this optimizes my content, uh, but there are some problems with uh, directly reading from the local storage and writing to the DOM. Because uh, HTML uh, can be uh, prone to XSS, uh, whatever you're writing from the local storage, and local storage though has a protection from the uh, cross-sourcing protection and all those uh, uh, stuff, but still it cannot be trusted because someone, uh, if I'm using the browser and someone else comes here and up, uh, updates my local storage through the inspector and uh, if I come back again and try to uh, use it might actually create XSS for me. So you have to never trust the whatever kept so probably you should use the uh, uh, clients and templating and uh, uh, just store the JSON in the local storage. So clients and templating is another optimization you can do on top of it and that actually uses the JSON plus your template and it builds the HTML out of it. And plus it also speeds up your overall uh, payload from the server because the JSON is smaller and then templates are just uh, up to a, a, a single repetition of HTML and then you build the entire HTML out of it. And for the clients and templating, you can use uh, these two fine-grained uh, options from the YUI. One is y.lang.sub, which is a very simple uh, substitution uh, templating. And then you have full-fledged templates like handlebar or mustache. And uh, with that, you can use the uh, template stored in the local storage or move it to the session storage if it is uh, uh, you have a security concern or uh, simply use uh, even you can cast the template on the uh, local storage and have the JSON and generate the HTML and write in back into the DOM. So local storage can be used in various scenario not just in this scenario where you're writing uh, 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 caching something in the local storage and writing back to the DOM. Other scenarios you can have is progressive loading uh, if you uh, want to show the initial layout of the web page and uh, later get uh, uh, filled with the actual data, you can use the local storage to store your uh, app structure overall layout. And uh, you can cache the HTML templates as I said, you can save the form data. If some user is filling some form which is uh, pretty longer and he uh, accidentally closes the DOM, uh, closes the window and he, he lost his data. So you can store the uh, form data in uh, local storage. Local storage can also be used as a client-side memcache. So there is implementation of LS cache on GitHub. You can use as a client-side memcache, which is uh, significant, significantly going to improve your web page performance. This is one, the, one of the examples which doesn't fit exactly in my example, but what Pin, Pinterest does is it throws back uh, a markup to you with a, a background fill, and then the actual image loads, loaded. So uh, what happens is the actual background to the image is uh, pretty much similar to what uh, the actual image is going to be. So uh, when actual image gets loaded, the user uh, doesn't get surprises. The, uh, the, uh, the overall structure remains same. So you can achieve something like this with your local storage caching. Then to further optimize your payload, you can actually uh, use some compressed JS format. So uh, there was a, there is a JS format called JS JSON H, which is a pretty s uh, simple format. And what it does is, uh, as you see, JSON has a repetition of repetition of keys in every object. If you have a array of uh, same object, so to avoid the repetition, it uh, uses a, another a array format where uh, the number of columns and the actual column names and the data is directly serialized into a single array, which is much more smaller than the actual JSON. So to reduce the JSON payload, you can actually use uh, uh, J JSON H. Earlier, the JSON H named was HPAC. Now it's obsolete, and uh, the new format is coming as a JSON H. 
and then uh, when you're making uh, multiple server calls to the uh, multiple server calls to retrieve your data you can use y dot parallel and y dot parallel is uh, a, a yui api which actually parallelize your calls to the server and that uh, since uh, most of the calls to the server is a net uh, involves network latency and other stuff you can always parallelize and achieve speed And uh, typically, uh, if you do something like async call one, and then in the callback you do another call, and then the third call, you can convert this as a, a serial, uh, very linear code, and then you say stack dot done, and stack dot done is actually a y dot parallel object. So stack, uh, it will call your callback here, and when every all of these callbacks are done. So here is a summary. Uh, so uh, what I did is I lazy load uh, to reduce the time to the first byte, and then I used the local storage to avoid uh, the loading container and the browser reflows, and then I used client side API to uh, client side templating to avoid the download of HTML uh, and uh, reduce the uh, server side payload, and then uh, you can use further the JSON uh, compressed JSON in JSON H format. And then you can make parallel calls to speed up your web page. So that's it from my side. All right. Thank you. So we have some time for questions. Do we have any questions in the audience? Uh, I want to get some, like, if you have any advice in using local storage, because myself, I never use it, but I heard of like many people like talking about how they should use it. Like some people would say like, although it saves something, uh, it saves the traffic to the server side, but sometimes uh, it takes memory or resource to open up the local storage. So like at the first page you load, maybe it will take time. And also because uh, the size of it can be very large. And then like, how, how do you like optimize the usage of local storage? And also another question is, uh, what is the best data to be stored in local storage? So I heard of uh, practice like saving assets like JavaScript, CSS, those kind of files, and some people will uh, store data. So what's your experience in using it? Thanks. Okay, so <coughs> uh, storing CSS and JavaScript is never recommended to, uh, to be done in the local storage because local storage has a pretty much limits uh, from every browser. Most of the browser comes with 5 MB of uh, uh, limit. So you're not recommended to store your uh, resources. Rather, you should use the cache headers to uh, cache on the uh, client side. And uh, other stuff is, uh, if local storage is too much occupied, sometimes it takes so much of time to load from the local storage. So it's, it's not rather your problem. It's uh, to the browser vendor's problem who actually uh, hasn't implemented it very well. So if your uh, local storage is uh, having so much of data, it takes a little bit of time to retrieve the data. So uh, that is not recommended, uh, means you not recommended to store s huge amount of data in the local storage. Mm, that's, uh, that's all I can say. Yeah. Uh, how do you uh, support browsers that don't support local storage? Um, sorry? When, when local storage is not available, how do you get, how does it, like, does it fail? Just just doesn't load uh, the sidebar? Yeah, so uh, in that case, uh, since you don't have the cache, every time hit the server and get the data. So your lazy load uh, should always be a lazy load module. So that's what will happen. Another uh, thing you can do is, uh, YUI has a gallery module for the local storage, which actually supports across the, uh, uh, most of the browser, even in up to the IE6. So it uses other older techniques. Uh, local storage is uh, Though it's HTML5 API, but it's still available in IE8, surprisingly. And uh, there are some other possible ways to uh, have local storage available in IE6, up to the IE6. And YUI has a module which actually falls back up to the IE6 in different ways to do the local storage. So if you're pretty serious about using this, you can use the YUI gallery module, which actually uh, progressively uh, degrades to various implementation. Okay, do we have any more questions? Oh. Did you look at uh, binary serialization like uh, Bison or MessagePack for getting your data down? 
yeah, but I haven't uh, tried because uh, one of the advantages of using JSON is it's human readable and H JSON is still readable. It's not really a uh, machine uh, code. So binary thing goes like um, uh, readability goes completely for the toss. So that's why we Thank you very much, Mark Candy, and uh, let's give a big hand for Mark Candy. All right.